Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and you're looking at a typical neutron star. At least the simulation of a typical neutron star. It's spinning really fast, but as you can see, it doesn't actually look like a typical spinning object. Which is of course due to the extremely strong relativistic effects that these stars experience very close to their surface. And this is one of the nearest neutron stars to us at a distance of about 420 light years away. It's known as PSR J0108. But the reason I wanted to start this video with a neutron star is because one of the recent discoveries coming from Finland is in regards to the matter inside the neutron stars. And the scientists behind this paper right here may have actually finally found evidence for the mysterious quark matter that you can see right here in the middle of this neutron star that a lot of the larger, more massive neutron stars possess. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to the Math. Neutron stars are already pretty mysterious. They're essentially extremely, extremely condensed matter. Matter that you kind of press so hard together that most of its interior starts acting sort of like one large atom. All of the protons and all of the neutrons are kind of squeezed together really tightly. They have practically no space between them. And at this point, the entire object starts acting a lot differently from any other matter we have here on planet Earth. But there have always been speculations about the so-called quark stars or basically stars that possess even more extreme type of matter known as quark matter. And some research even suggested that maybe we can find it inside more massive, more unusual neutron stars as well. This quark matter is actually, I guess, kind of difficult to imagine. So first of all, there are quite a lot of different subatomic particles, and some of them end up creating larger particles that we're more familiar with, like proton and neutron. This animation here kind of shows you how sometimes protons and neutrons interact with each other by sending other subatomic particles toward each other, and this is of course how some of the nuclear reactions work. So the idea here is that the proton itself is made up of other subatomic particles. But generally speaking, the connection between them, the actual strength between them, is ridiculously strong. Which is why it's actually known as the strong force. The strong force is about 137 times stronger than the electromagnetic force, and like trillions and trillions and trillions of times stronger than the gravity itself. So this is the strongest force we have in the universe, and it's responsible for holding these particles together. But the action of strong force can only be felt at really, really short distances, so it will never be felt between particles that are farther away. Unless, of course, you bring those particles much closer together, such as, for example, in extremely dense and extremely compact environments, such as a neutron star. Inside a neutron star, the pressures will reach such tremendous levels that at some point, even the protons and the neutrons can start breaking apart and create just the quarks themselves. They essentially form a kind of a liquid-like formation known as quark matter. It does act sort of like a liquid, but not a classical liquid, a liquid we usually refer to as Fermi liquid, and at the same time, it possesses a lot of other properties we're currently still investigating, we're not even sure what exactly it does. Mostly because so far it's still kind of theoretical. But hypothetically, if this quark matter is real, it will always be formed in extremely high temperature conditions and also extremely high density or pressure conditions. So a neutron star is a perfect place to find these unusual formations. And just to give you a really interesting comparison here, on a completely opposite side of the scale, that is if you reduce the energy and the temperature to extremely low levels and you also reduce the density, you'll get this other type of matter known as Bose-Einstein condensate. And this is when all of the particles sort of stop moving and start acting like this huge, large particle altogether. They essentially start forming these extremely large and massive quantum states. They all start acting like one single particle. And since we've been able to create these in the lab, we know that this is real, and so is the quark matter probably. But unlike Bose-Einstein condensate, quark matter we cannot create in a lab simply because of the absolutely ridiculously extreme conditions required to produce this particular type of matter. It just requires way too much heat and way too much density. Right now, it's still kind of theoretical because we don't really know how to make it. But today we believe that quark matter existed in these first few seconds of the existence of the universe itself, and it may also still exist today, and not even only in neutron stars. So trying to understand what neutron stars may possess on the inside could actually help us understand a little bit more about quark matter as well. And so the scientists behind this paper, 
Based on some of the new observations of neutron star collisions and also the discovery of the most massive neutron star that was roughly around two masses of the Sun, we're able to create a very interesting model that essentially created a kind of an equation of a state for a really massive neutron star or for a neutron star that created this particular collision. In other words, they were able to use the new determination of the radius and mass of a typical neutron star and then used a lot of different calculations to determine if ordinary matter, basically non-quark matter, could actually allow for such objects to exist. And they realized that for a really massive neutron star to exist, at some point things actually kind of start breaking down, specifically in regards to the so-called speed of sound. It actually starts approaching the speed of light, and that creates conditions that are very difficult to explain with the current physics. But if a neutron star possesses a really, really massive core made up of quark matter, also known as strange matter, this would explain how a neutron star can still exist and still stay stable and not violate any laws of physics. In other words, they provide theoretical evidence that inside of a typical large and more massive neutron star, over about 1.4 masses of the Sun, there's probably at least some quark matter present on the inside. But I guess the question is, why does it matter to us, especially if we can never produce this quark matter here on Earth? Well, it turns out that there is actually another theoretical concept known as continent of stability, which was also discussed and discovered a couple of years ago, so it's still a kind of a new concept. But the idea here is pretty brilliant and could actually completely transform our understanding of matter and quark matter. The idea is as follows. At certain point, when an atom gets to really, really large atomic masses, here we're talking about going beyond the periodic table to uh, mass numbers of about 300, or actually, more specifically, 315, we can reach a point where the atom becomes so massive and so compact that it starts acting like quark matter and becomes what's known as UD matter, or up-down matter. In other words, the extremely massive atoms with masses of over 315 um, atomic masses will actually become quark matter stable at regular temperatures. The scientists behind this paper estimated that it's even more stable than iron, which is today the most stable element we know. But the atoms themselves do not act like normal matter anymore. They still act like quark matter and can even absorb even more neutrons making their mass grow with time. So these are extremely unusual, very, very strange, and almost impossible for us currently to imagine states of matter that we've never been able to create before, but according to these new discoveries, it might actually totally be possible to create this here on planet Earth, assuming we can make these massive atoms. And with this evidence of existence of quark matter and neutron stars, and the evidence for the so-called continent of stability when it comes to large massive particles, as well as our understanding that quark matter used to exist long time ago, this could also of course explain the existence of dark matter. For all we know, dark matter is quark matter that stayed for a very long time since the original creation of the universe, and it's something that we just haven't really looked at and haven't analyzed in detail just yet. This also means that if one day we are able to create this quark matter, the entire periodic table is going to expand quite dramatically. It might even become infinite. Although we don't really know what quark matter does in actual room temperature conditions, and for all we know, it's also extremely dangerous. But nevertheless, it's an extremely interesting discovery and confirmation, and whoever is able to create quark matter in the lab in the next few decades is most likely going to be the next Nobel Prize winner. Although, let's just hope it doesn't lead to something like this happening here on planet Earth because we don't really know what quark matter does to regular matter. But anyway, it's a really interesting discovery. These exciting papers that came out in the last two or three years have actually redefined our understanding of not just physics, but also chemistry that we thought we understood pretty well. And at the same time, it provides an opportunity for us to combine sciences and different fields and create something unique, something that we only thought was possible inside extreme conditions inside stars, but here on planet Earth. And I'm sure at some point someone will find a way to make these unusual quark matter particles somewhere in the lab on the planet. So in the next few years you might be hearing more about this type of matter known as quark matter, especially as we learn more about it. Until then though, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and check out the papers I mentioned in the description below. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.